welcome back to Women Meets Motherhood. Um, today we have Claudia and Orla, who's going to sh they're going to share with us about traumatic labours. We're going to hear from Claudia about her experience um, giving birth to her first baby, her daughter. And then also we're going to speak to Orla, who's a women's health physio. And he's going to talk a little bit about recovery post the traumatic labour and hopefully give you guys the tools that you need to make sure that you guys are fit and ready for number two, number three, some of you number four. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Claudia, if you don't mind sharing, how was, how was your pregnancy first? Uh, my pregnancy was really good, actually. Um, it was I was seen as a low risk pregnancy, um, number one because of my age, um, and also I haven't got any like health complications. Um, she done really well. Um, appointments went well. I couldn't complain at all. The only thing was probably low iron, oh. so um, I had to take. Uh, medication for that mm -hmm. but um other than that it was really good so because of that i wanted to do a water birth because i just heard such great things about it and i thought why don't i try to be as natural as possible mm. but in the hospital yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah so and why water birth like why not just what was it about the water i just like the water um now being through labor i probably think way too much <laughs> because i was more relaxed than ready to push yeah um and yeah, I just heard good things about it. I watched every single episode of One Born Every Minute wow. from beginning to end, <laughs> honestly, you? yeah. Wow. And you saw a lot I of just, water birth babies. I saw a lot of them. I thought, wow, this is good. Um, I, yeah, it just looked beautiful. It was kind of like... And is that something that you discussed with your husband, that yeah. this is what we're going to... And he was supporting... And he was fine with it. He was like, oh, whatever you want, because I don't think he'd done much research. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, to be fair, once I told him, then he'd done research. Oh, OK. Yeah. Be sure to catch up home with that could change your mind. Clearly as well. well. It's funny enough, I was talking about it before, um, they tried to sell me the packet, the whole <laughs> Gold Star service before, because they said that, uh, because I was low risk, it was an option um, and I love the sound of it but I knew it was my first baby and had no idea what was, what was yeah. going to happen and so I said I'll do hospital instead but the next thing in my head would be the water bath mm. like the most closest thing to natural you know letting your body do it for you um, so how many weeks were you when you went into labour? I was 40 weeks plus four days. Okay. So I was so, so ready. So you were ready. I was so ready. <laughs> I, from 30 weeks. <laughs> I was really, honestly. And you think, okay, you know, baby time. But I was huge. It was really big. I think probably a lot of water retention. But I was like, ready. I'm ready. So, yeah. so tell us about your labour. So 40 yeah. weeks plus four days arrived. Yeah. And then what happened? Um, so I'll start a bit before when I was 40 weeks plus three days and um, I decided that I wanted to go for a walk up a hill to get things moving um, so that she would come out ASAP. Um, so Does that actually help? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't really know for sure. Okay. Well, that's the, <laughs> Anything's worth trying. Anything is worth trying and we, I was so ready. Plus I'd already uh, come on my maternity leave for work. Okay. So I thought, oh, I want more time with the baby yeah. than without. Um, went for the walk up a really steep hill. It was so steep, like I could put my hand on the floor in front of me, like as I was what getting like, is? it's Spa Hill. I don't know if people that live in Croydon area, but um, yeah, anyways, it was really steep. So I went for a walk and there's a harvester at the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So I met my mum there. She really taken time off work as well, getting ready for the baby. And Will, we had, my husband, we had breakfast there. Um, but it was like 12. <laughs> and then um, finished that and then walked back down mm -hmm. the hill home. And then about 7 p.m. that night, I heard a loud pop. And I was like, oh. I was in bed, yeah. I heard a loud pop and I was like, oh, the noise. So I rushed into the toilet and literally, whoosh, my That's like in the movies. Yeah, it was, yeah, honestly. Like, you don't actually hear it in real life. No, yeah, like, it was like, loud. I literally went, oh, well, did you hear that? And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, my water's broke. And he didn't, and he was like, no, it was the loudest thing ever. Yeah, that was, I was so happy that I thought, oh, it's the waters. Um, so yeah, it was really good. That bit was fine. And then I was like, oh, that means it's happening. But before that, you didn't have bone contraction. I had Braxton here. Yeah. But yeah. Because for me, yeah, I, my waters break just before the baby comes out. Right. Literally, so pop, then I start pushing. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. for you, it was, it was like, waters break, then you go into the process yeah, of Yeah, then it came. And honestly, it was like, I had Braxton hits for probably like a few days before. Mm -hmm. So it's been, ha it, like, I felt like, oh yeah, she's going to come and nothing happened until the waters broke. And then probably like, we, I called the hospital and I said, I think my waters are broken. 
um, they were like, yeah, come in, we'll check for you. And then because it's your first baby, it takes ages. So you probably go home. Mm. And I was like, great, we'll come. But we took our time, got our stuff together and um, reached the hospital probably around 8 p.m. Um, went to the birthing suite and they checked. And I was like, yeah, it does look like it has broken. But because it's your first baby, you can go home and then, you know, keep us updated. And the moment I literally packed my bag, I felt this big whoosh of a contraction and it had started. And then it was full on as well. And I was screaming down the hospital. <laughs> and my husband was like, what's going on? And I was like, I think this is it. Um, so the midwife came back in and said, oh, from what I can hear, I think you're ready. Like, we'll just keep you in instead of you going home. So I thought, great, that's easy. So um, I stayed and then as time went along, it, the contractions got closer and closer. And I thought, wow, we're making progress. How long had that been? Mm, I would say for like, this was like two hours for quite a while. But then when she checked me, I was literally only eight centimeters. Eight. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, no. No, I was like, no, two centimeters. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was like, eight centimeters. No, 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 no. I was two centimeters and I was like, what? <laughs> And I was so angry and I was like, but I'm in pain and this has been for ages and it should be way further. Yeah. I was so confused. And she was like, yeah, I'm sorry, this is it. And, like, <laughs> and if you heard the noise I was making. What kind of noise was it? It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was intense. Um, so yeah, and I just didn't know what to do with myself. And I was like, what drugs can I have? And because before I was like, like oh, yeah, easy pregnancy. Yeah, I'm going to be natural. <laughs> I was like, yeah, my body's going to take over. And then I was like, give it to me. And then <laughs> they gave me um, pethidine. So, um, and I... Did you know much about the drug before you... No, I don't. I said, before. give it to me. Yeah, let me have it. <laughs> because, because I was in the birthing suite, I knew it couldn't be yeah, anything yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, whatever it is, give it to me. And because I was like, I can't believe I'm two centimetres and I'm in this much, this much pain already. So I thought, please, 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 just let it go. And to be fair, it knocked me out. Um, I was very drowsy. I was in and out. And I literally only realised where I was when I woke up, when I had a contraction. And then I kind of like conked out again after. So I loved it. Um, and my husband was saying, I was saying things like, put the blue blueberries in the lawnmower and all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to take the <laughs> was like, Honestly, I don't know. Blueberries I'm so glad I didn't say anything that um, I <laughs> yeah. regret today because that stuff is dangerous. Um, so yeah, so then time, I don't know how much time passed. I've probably another like, hour or so and I was like I must be there now check me check me and they was like no we don't want to in case of infection we'll just let you keep going and then they put me in the water so they put me in the pool it was really warm really lovely and to be fair it was they say it relaxes you but it relaxed me way too much because I was literally sitting there like well, like that was that the drug as well no I think the drug had worn off now okay. I think it was just me just in the warm water I just loved it um and it was really nice and then they started to give me gas and air which was nice. Um, so this was for like another few hours. So to be fair, I probably should have gone home because it took really long. All in all, my labour was 18 hours. Wow. So it was a very long time. But that's interesting that you say you should have gone home because it's, it's funny how we're really like, quick to be like, no home, yeah, no home. Yeah. But then you feel like... I was there for so long, mm. yeah. So that, had you maybe be just been in your environment, you probably would have... I think, it would have I think it would have made it quicker as well. I feel, I, honest, I don't know, every woman is different mm. and I can't say this is for other women out there, but I think the pool made me too relaxed. And my mum was with me and she said, labour means labour for a reason. You're here to work and get this baby out. <laughs> my mum's quite <laughs> straight to the point. And when I look back, I think, yeah, I probably will just be there and push and then get the baby out because I was, yeah. I wouldn't say it took the pain away, but I was, I was thinking, oh, this is just so long. And I lost a lot of energy. And because I hadn't eaten from 12 the day before, like the day before, it was quite a long time. And I was losing energy. Um, the gas and air, I just wanted like loads of water. It made my mouth dry. Mm. Um, and I was in the pool and then, I don't know timing wise, but then I felt like, okay, I need to push. Mm. So then I said, can you check me now? Because I literally feel like she wants to come. And they checked me and then I was eight centimeters. And I thought, oh, that's good. But that doesn't mean I can push yet. Like, I can't get her out yeah. because it's still... In Did you understand that? No, I felt like my body was telling me to push if I was honest. I had that feeling. It's, it's quite strong, isn't it? I had that feeling to push. 
Yeah. And my walls hadn't even broken eight centimeters yet. They were still there. They were still in place. But I wanted to push, and mm. it was just, she just kept going, "Don't push." Mm. It was taking everything within me to, to not, not push. push. Yeah. Push. Um, so my walls didn't break until I reached ten centimeters. Oh wow! Later. So they broke before she came, just before she came. But I was fighting Ready. every urge yeah. to not push. But yeah. I felt like I should push. I just felt this big, like every time the contraction came, I just wanted to get her out. Um, but soon after that, actually, it was 10 centimetres because they checked me again and I was in the water and they asked me, Claudia, do you want to um, push in the water just to make sure before I wouldn't have yeah. to come out? And I was like, if I can, definitely, please. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, sure, we'll do it because I thought everything was fine. Mm-hmm. I thought everything would be fine. And they asked me, like, they know what they're doing. Mm. So then in the water now, in the pool, and I'm going for it, I'm pushing, I'm 10 centimetres, so I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. And I feel movement, so I know like something's happening, yeah. and I know some, like it's going on, and I'm pushing for quite a while. Um, and then all of a sudden there's like no more movement, and then they check to see like where the baby is, and they're like, okay. And then they're like, all right, Claudia, you need to get out of the pool right now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> because the pool is literally like... So did you start panicking like, at this moment, or were you just so like... I was panicking because I could feel her hair. I felt her hair. I could feel her. And they were telling me to move. And I was like, the baby's here. The baby's right here. Like, why is she not coming out? Um, And I was like, do you know what? Just push her back up. Push her back up. (laughs) And cut me up. Yeah. I said, push her up and cut me out and get this baby out of there. I haven't heard that one before. Honestly. (laughs) Because I thought it would be quicker. Because I was pushing for so long. I honestly thought it would be quicker for them to just cut her out. Or just like do it their way yeah. instead of me continuing yeah. to push and the fact that they wanted to get me out and I guess a yeah. woman in labour can say anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, push her back up and just cut me. And they were like, no, Claudia, you can do it. You can do it. And I guess I'm in a birthing centre. So they're really yeah. like, yeah. you, can, you do can do it. But they're probably thinking at this point, you don't really want to do it. And I'm like, I can't do it. I can't. They're like, you have to do it. And then I'm climbing out the pool with a baby in between my legs. Uh, my husband is carrying me out and I'm like, this is crazy. I can't believe this is happening to me, especially because my pregnancy was yes. nice. Um, came out, they had already laid a mat on the floor with a bean bag. Um, and I was on all fours, push, push, push. And literally, like, after a few pushes, she was out. Um, and there was no sound. The cord was wrapped around her neck twice. And then, like, ten doctors and nurses came rushing in and took her away. So I didn't even see her. And then I turned around and I was like literally laying in a pool of my own blood. So let's stop there and bring all into the conversation, just in terms of... So I've just had a lot of pushing from like <laughs> eight centimetres. Is that pushing at the wrong time? Does that contribute? Yeah, to like some of the trauma that can happen to your body. I mean, it's really important to listen to your body, but also to listen to the midwife mm-hmm. or the doctor. So definitely uh, pushing when you feel the contraction. Mm-hmm. Um, and listening to the midwife and she tells you to stop pushing. Yeah. It's very difficult and it feels like it's against everything yeah. you feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's important to listen to what they say because that can affect um, the labour mm-hmm. and, and the delivery. So yeah, definitely follow your instructions. Yeah. Um, and I think we talked as well about practising kind of yeah. the pushing and knowing what your breathing techniques are and knowing when you should push and what that will feel like. So it's definitely worth bearing in mind, yeah. Mm. So what are the things, so I know um, this was traumatic, which is probably not just your body, but mm. probably just the whole experience. This, you, you planned a birth centre labour. Yeah. So you expect a birth centre labour, you expect it to be like in one born every minute, Honestly. like the ball <laughs> and the lava lamp that they always have. And all this, but you expect it to be so, but I guess probably the stark contrast and what happened to what you were expecting yeah. probably made it traumatic, yeah. probably more traumatic. They probably it, if I just didn't know anything. Yeah, if you yeah. didn't know anything. Um, but Ola, if you could just talk about some of um, the trauma. When we talk about trauma and you talk about being a woman's health physio, um, what type of trauma are you talking about? Well, um, as a women's health physio, I work to help prevent and treat problems that can come about with pregnancy and childbirth, amongst other things. And really, to be frank, every labour is traumatic. It's been equated uh, to, you know, a fairly significant sporting injury and that's whether it's been a quite straightforward labour or whether it's been a little bit more complicated and traumatic in the kind of typical sense of the word like yours Claudia. Um, So it's really important that we think about what's happening to your body and then what your recovery should be afterwards. I think we take it for granted because it's a natural process that we don't really need to do much to recover from it and that everything will just go back to normal but often that's not the case. And I think it's really important to make sure women are aware of the things they should look out for, the things that are normal and not so normal and what they can do to help themselves. 
So what are the things that you do in your service to help women? So one of the main things is um, trying to educate women in pregnancy about the things they're looking out for. Um, so that would be things, anything from bladder weakness um, during pregnancy and after delivery to pelvic pain. What do you class as bladder weakness? So anything where, say for example, you leak when you cough or you sneeze, a lot of people kind of think that's quite normal if you've had a baby and they put up with it or they're maybe too ashamed to go to the doctor and ask about it. And although it's quite a common problem to have, especially just after you've had a baby, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. So if you're experiencing that, um, kind of anything after the first six to 12 weeks after you've had your baby, you really should go and either find a women's health physio or go to your GP to seek out a referral because it's not normal to still be having that. Um, pelvic pain as well. Um, can occur in pregnancy, so about one in five pregnancies and um, they'll get pelvic or low back pain. Um, so again, although it's quite common, it's not necessarily normal and there's lots you can do to help yourself. Um, and pains like that should go away quite quickly once you've had the baby. So if that's carrying on afterwards um, or you've got new aches and pains after you've had your baby, you should definitely go um, and seek help for it because it's not normal to have that. So I remember with my second son, I had, I think it was, I can't remember now, my left or right hip, when I was asleep on one side, if I had to turn over, it would wake yeah. me up. And it was for weeks. I think in my six week check, I told the GP, but he was like, oh, it's fine. You'll be fine. But uh, after weeks, and it only went away when I started exercising. Yeah. And then it, I just remember one day being like, oh, that pain that I had. So I had it during pregnancy. Yeah. And then it just continued and just wouldn't go away. Yeah. But then now, I guess, because I'm, I don't know, maybe the strength training that I'm doing is just gone yeah. completely. Would you probably say that exercise... Yeah, time, exercise, but also it's kind of knowing what to do. Um, but these problems don't always go away no matter what you try. So um, it's definitely worth being aware that there are things that you can get help for um, and not to just put up with it, really. Um, and then Claudia, so you left us being in a pool of blood. Oh, yeah. So did, did, you, did you tear? I did. Um, I had a second degree tear. Um, they wasn't sure if they... Well, they, she said that we wasn't sure if we were going to cut you or just let you tear. So they let me tear. Um, she said it wasn't too bad, I had stitches done. Um, but yeah, even that, to be fair, once you've pushed out a baby, you don't really feel much <laughs> else down there anyway. So they um, numbed me and then um, stitched me. And then uh, I think the recovery, not many people would talk about mm. it as much as they talk about labor itself. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, more women should be aware that the recovery for every woman, every person is different. But for me, I couldn't like physically get up from a bed and move around to go to the toilet or to get food for like a good two days. And um, my husband would push me around in a wheelchair around the hospital. Um, and like down there, when you need to use the toilet, it can be another story. So um, I think the recovery was another thing that just made it all how long did it take for the stitches down there to feel like I'm back to normal, pretty much? Mm. Do you feel like you noticed it? I don't know if I noticed it. Oh, you, I, yeah. I also I had a second degree tear. Mm. I think like I think I, I would sit down like this, like, mm. like yeah. one bit bum cheek and the other bum cheek, <laughs> and for a long time. I remember when I had probably when I went for my first beer, I was actually like, okay, like it was real as a really like thing to get my head around to okay I'm gonna go for a wee now and sit down and then like let it go slowly yeah, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't that scary as in when you did it it was fine what about when you poo the, that, that that was a mission in itself I, I felt like I shouldn't I couldn't do it like I didn't bring myself to actually poo but then like it's fine when I did it was fine actually but it was literally like I don't know how long I held it I don't know I don't know what day I pooed but I, I was day three or four but the midwife gave me good advice she said just let it do itself mm. if that makes sense yeah. so because oh, don't push yeah okay. don't because it will just come out mm. and it actually it literally did yeah so in the process <laughs> was fine but it was the anticipation yeah. of going through the process yeah. but even that will so when people go through tears what kind of things can you do because it's like you just you just don't know whether to you, you just feel like you have to hold yourself in or i feel like mm. i was just always like tense yeah trying to combat the way because it's like because it's underneath your where you sit down i felt like i was always just like tense yeah. and never like i don't know how to explain it but yeah what yeah. what can you do? well definitely when it's kind of um when you're kind of newly recovering from a tear it's important to protect that area like you protect any kind of cut and mm -hmm. stitches and um, so thinking about what you're sitting on mm -hmm. like cushioning and things like that 
Um, you can even get cool packs to help with any swelling or soreness down below. Um, but going to the toilet the first time is quite frightening. Yeah. Um, one of the main things I'd say is, is like you said, is to let the let your 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 body do its own thing and not to strain. Mm -hmm. um, a really good tip is to pop your feet up on a little footstool, uh, footrest, um, and lean forwards. Uh, we're designed to open our bowels squatting, um, mm -hmm. so when we sit on a toilet, it doesn't really work as well. But if you pop your feet up, you get into that kind of more bent forward position, and then things happen a bit more naturally. Mm -hmm. And if it helps, you can even just support that bit where the stitches are in front with maybe a bit of tissue paper, just mm -hmm. so you feel a bit more confident in, in any bearing down that you end up doing. So that's. And how, how do you feel about then the first time you're intimate again with your spouse, if down there is? Especially if you do it on the six week. <laughs> I, think, I think I was on the on the calendar. I, think I remember that day. I, think I, I do remember that that day, and I was I was just I, I I think I did my best to think about how I felt felt because the first time my husband had sex was was the first time we got married. So I felt like and let me think about that feeling I had of trying to actually relax myself because mm. otherwise I don't know I didn't know what was gonna happen I didn't I because li obviously the stitches were gone mm. and just like no just no one had been down there. So. But it, but it felt back to normal. I mean, it's hard to explain, but I mean, it's like, because they sew you, I felt like it was like, um, I don't know, it's like, if I was to feel down there, I felt like it wouldn't, I never looked at it, so I don't know how it looks, um, but I felt like it was normal, um, so, you know, but I, I, I feel like I can remember the night for many different reasons, it wasn't at home, it was just like, oh, in my house. <laughs> <So, laughs> <laughs> didn't say yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But it was like, but it was like, I, I just try, I tried so hard to just relax yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if that, I guess that was the right thing because it was, it was okay. It probably felt like, it, it felt, it wasn't like as bad as when I first had sex the first time, mm -hmm. but it was like a bit uncomfortable, but it was fine. It was actually fine, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's coming because I made a conscious decision t to relax myself. Because mm -hmm. I think if I had been like how I'd been when I first toured, that whole like tenseness, which I was doing the whole time, and every time I sat down, I was like, like it's like I was pulling myself up. I didn't want to feel feel this yes. sat on it. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'd done that, it would have been a whole different story. Um, so Ola, can you just give us some tips just about how to prevent um, your body? Yeah, just how to prevent weakness and how, how do we be strong? Yeah, so I think if I was going to get people to think about doing one exercise in pregnancy and labour, um, it would be pelvic floor exercises. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know you're expecting it. that one. But Michelle's seen her pelvic floor exercises. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, 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 it's <laughs> But um, I know it's what you expect from a physio, but it is probably the, the most important one to do. Um, from a young age, but certainly once you get pregnant, I would start doing it. Your, your pelvic floor muscles automatically get weaker mm -hmm. in pregnancy because you've got hormones relaxing everything, but also then as the baby gets heavier. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously in labor, even if you have a natural labor with no tears, no cuts, nothing, you're stretching those muscles mm -hmm. um, and they get, they get torn and cut mm -hmm. um, as well and they get stitched up, but they need to be strengthened again. So once you feel ready, um, as soon as you can, then you can get back to doing them. So um, is that pelvic, for the rest of your life. It is like, for the rest of your no life. Uh, no, un <laughs> until your dying day, I'm afraid. <laughs> Um, because once you reach menopause, they can actually get weaker again. Um. So, yeah, it's a bit like brushing your teeth. You kind of just have to do it every day, forever. Um, and just to briefly explain how to do that, you basically can do it any position you like, sitting, standing, lying, and you're essentially squeezing around your back passage like you're trying to stop wind. And then imagine your back passage, your back passage okay. not your buttocks. Um, and then imagine like you're zipping up, zipping closed forwards and upwards like you're trying to stop a wee at the same time. Mm. And you do long holds, up to 10 seconds each. You do 10 of those in a row, or whatever you can manage. And then 10 short flicks. Um, and you do that three times a day until you feel like you're as strong as you can be. And then it's once a day for, forever. Do you do it? Do you do it? Of course. I have to, pra I have to practice what I preach. For women that have C-section, is there anything that they can do? Um, so they need to do pretty much similar things. Mm -hmm. They have some extra restrictions, which they'll be told about once they leave hospital in terms of lifting and driving. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, C-section isn't protective for pelvic floor problems and pelvic floor weakness. Pregnancy itself, like I said, causes the weakness. So it's really important for even if you had a C-section, whether it's elective or emergency, that you do your pelvic floor exercises as well. 
And then all I know, you've got a few projects yes. that are coming up. Yep. So if you tell us a bit about them and how people yeah, find Yeah, so um, we know it's really important that you keep fit during your pregnancy. So um, I'm just starting uh, maternally fit classes, um, which are kind of aerobic and core strengthening uh, classes. Um, so they'll be starting in September. Um, and then I... Using weights. There's weights, hand weights, if people want to use weights. It's, it's fairly active. So it's not like the typical Pilates or yoga pregnancy class. It's a bit more active for people who like to be a bit more strong. Um, strong. Um, and then I'm uh, starting up a fourth trimester uh, workshop with um, Leah from the Pure Peach. So that's to educate people in the kind of last trimester of pregnancy about this kind of postnatal period and how they can recover. Um, so they're prepared for it. Um, and then I work out of Surrey Physio Clinic as well, doing seeing one-to-one -one patients, for anyone who needs kind of one-to-one -one assessment and treatment. So I'll put your details yes. below so that yeah. if anybody wants to get in contact yes. with you, they can. Well, before we go, I just want to ask Claudia, how, how, how is Sienna obviously after, after that experience? She's great, she's doing well. She's 10 months today, which is amazing. Um, growing every day. Like it was really hard in the hospital because Obviously they took her away, she wasn't breathing, and they had to get her breathing, um, and then she was fine, and then she had a seizure, she had a fit. So Is that, that because was she wasn't breathing before? I think, I feel there's many reasons they give, but they said one of them was lack of oxygen to the brain, and so um, they kept her in an incubator. So I actually didn't hold her till like five days after she was born. Wow, so how did that make you feel? Like That was another, <laughs> another thing in itself, because especially after like the labour, and then I hadn't like seen her till later. Then I hadn't held her or like I, I, like to breastfeed all that kind of stuff. Mm. I had to um, pump at the mm. hospital, and so yeah, it was it was a big journey. Um, like luckily we were only there for a week, mm. but it was like the longest week of my life yeah. um, to have like a fresh baby and going through through that. But because she was overdue, she was like the biggest baby there. She was fine. She was solid. Um, uh, but yeah, to see all the things they were saying, you know, this could have happened or that could have happened, and hearing like the statistics, you just think, you know, uh, God, it's in your hands, and I just like, I just, for me, it was a prayer like that she'll be fine, and um, and she is, she's amazing, she is like. What's one tip you give to women that go through traumatic labours or any experience in labour that they don't expect? But they don't expect. Uh, for me, number one, pray. Um, because I think that's the only thing that got me through. I think day three, when like your milk comes in, is just seen as like when you're really emotional, and that's when I like went in front of the incubator and I just constantly just cried, 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 oh. and I was just like, I can't believe this is happening. But literally because of like prayer and that hope, I'd be like, you know, she's going to be fine. And if you see her now, you would mm -hmm. never even think she went for any of that. And another thing is just stay hopeful as well, like. And because babies are strong, mm, babies resilient. are very resilient, more than you think. They look, you know, tiny, and get, but they've been through so much. So, yeah, it's been amazing. Oh, Honestly. Oh. So, um, yeah, that's it. Amazing. So thank you both so much for, we've got the experience and then we've got the tips, the, the practical side. So we really appreciate it. So thank you for tuning into this episode. Um, we're going to drop all the links and resources below. So if you need any help, just click the links below and remember to comment like and subscribe and always be encouraged be equipped and be empowered